In a fight between a turtle and a Komodo dragon, who would you put your money on? Well, you might want to pick again. Just because an animal has its head inside the turtle's shell doesn't always mean that it's winning. Sometimes it can mean that the predator had its calculations wrong and got its big head stuck in the shell. Or that the turtle, together with its defense mechanisms, has put up a spirited fight and is giving its predator hell. So, who is it gonna be? Sit tight as we take a look at how turtles defend themselves against the enemy. For an animal with a top speed of 1 mile per hour, it is safe to say that speed isn't its strongest suit when it comes to getting away from predators. If it dares try to run, even a tired predator is likely to catch up with it. This is why turtles are equipped with a more efficient way of evading their predators without actually running. When threatened, all turtles have to do is retract their heads and legs into their shell. Their powerful necks allow them to do this at lightning speed. Not to worry though, their heads and limbs are far much smaller compared to the rest of the body. This allows them to comfortably fit in the shell and lay low until the predator goes away. Their necks, legs, and tails are covered in tough scales that are sometimes enough to deter predators, but to be on the safe side, they're better off safely hidden in the shell. For the likes of box turtles, their bony shells have evolved hinges that allow the shell to close completely. This shell acts as their natural armor and is divided into two. The upper shell is the harder part that we all know and see, and it's also known as the carapace, while the undershell is known as the plastron. They both work together to protect the softer parts of the body. The shell is attached to its body, which means that the turtle can't leave its shell at will just as snails do. But this also means that they feel when their shell is touched. It won't be painful, just very uncomfortable, like when someone touches your hair without asking. The upper shell is often smooth, so any predator trying to bite through it ends up with its teeth sliding off, so it can be very frustrating to a hungry predator. However, for a turtle to enjoy the full benefits of this shell, they need to be well past the juvenile stage. This is because the newly hatched turtles have very soft shells that most predators can easily pierce through, which explains why the mortality rate is higher in baby turtles than adults. However, even the slightly older ones are not safe because eagles and other larger birds have a smarter way of cracking open their shell. These birds of prey grab the turtles with their talons, fly them up as high as they can and drop them down on a rock, instantly making the shell crack. These younger shells can also be easily broken into pieces by a crocodile. For the record, a turtle shell can withstand forces up to 200 times its weight, so it's not a very easy job for the crocodile either. Other animals, such as snakes and sharks, skip the chewing and prefer to swallow the turtles whole. Sadly, their bodies cannot digest the turtle shells, and so they only end up with a stomach full of regret. Snakes suffer from internal injuries caused by the sharp edges of the shell, and sharks often end up choking to death. And if they succeed in swallowing the turtle, they end up dead just within a few hours. If you were to split open the belly of that shark, you would find inside a breathing turtle. Luckily, as the turtles grow older, their shells harden, and they generally become heavier, making them harder to hunt, carry, or swallow. However, this shell isn't always predator-proof, especially when it comes to these little creatures known as fire ants. I don't need to explain how small ants usually are in general, or how they're able to fit in unimaginably small spaces. So it's no surprise that any small space in the shell is like a tunnel in the eyes of the fire ants. Just when the turtle thinks it's safely hidden, the fire ants come marching in large numbers and eat the turtle alive. Remember, the turtle can't just dash out of its shell and seek safety elsewhere. When it comes to fire ants, the size of the turtle doesn't really matter. To survive to a point of lacking predators, turtles must choose their habitat carefully. Yes, turtles consider environments that blend in with their color when house hunting. For land turtles, their brown and white markings help them blend in with the savanna, and as for sea turtles, they're countershaded and hence appear darker from above and lighter from below. This helps them hide in plain sight. But when camouflage doesn't work while on land and they happen to spot a predator, these creatures can decide to run for their dear lives, but first, they must dig a burrow. Turtles are equipped with tough claws and front legs that are slightly flattened, which makes digging easy. Turtles can dig burrows that are either shallow or go as deep as 30 feet. To make their escape even easier, they dig more than one burrow, say about 35 of them within its territory. These burrows also double up as winter homes or cooling shades during the summer. It is in these burrows that they also lay their eggs. The good thing is they have no trouble sharing burrows, so they just hop into the closest one to them during times of danger. However, this does not mean that they'll always live harmoniously together. 
fights do break out amongst them, and especially the males. To defend themselves against their kind, turtles are equipped with a Guler horn. This is an extension of the plastron. Remember the undershell we talked about? The Guler horn is usually larger in males, which is no surprise, since they fight a lot and hence need and use it more. The Guler horn is what they use to flip each other over. Flipping your opponent is the equivalent of knocking them out in the turtle world. The turtle is still alive, but in a very vulnerable position. It's practically game over. But when biting is in play, turtles can sometimes bite back. Yes, another one of their self-defense weapons is their beak. Toothless? Sure, but it gets the job done. Once that beak snaps shut, someone is going to be writhing in serious pain. One is likely to leave with a large open wound and a lesson learned. Who better to demonstrate this than the alligator snapping turtle? The alligator snapping turtle is as scary as it looks. When it comes to this turtle, what you see is exactly what you get. It has a bite force of 1000 PSI, which means it can snap through bone within seconds. But for obvious reasons, sea turtles can't always bite back. Instead, they have large paddle-like foreflippers that make them powerful swimmers, which is something that they need if they're to get away from the sharks and whales that hunt them. Their bodies are also streamlined for endurance and speed in the water, which also comes in handy when they need to do a U-shaped dive to escape their predators. Their upper eyelids are also larger than normal to protect their delicate eyelids. Another way that turtles defend themselves is by letting out a foul musk. The major culprit is the eastern musk turtle, or as many would like to call it, stink pot. If an animal has a nickname as bad as that, then you need to cover your nose around it, or even better, stay far away from it. When threatened, picked up, or attacked, the two small glands under the carapace release a foul smell. Keep in mind that most turtles feed on rotten fish. Do you know how bad rotten fish smells? Now imagine the aftermath of its digestion. Ugh. To explain this better, most musk turtles are usually small in size. Most times they're no more than 6 inches, but the musk they produce is usually enough to deter predators. And as if that isn't gross enough, some turtle species go as far as emptying the contents of their cloaca. Here only the very hungriest of predators can get past this. This species of turtle can hoard water, and when they feel threatened, they can immediately let out a never-ending stream of pee. The females take it even a notch higher during the nesting period. They pee before, during, and after they have laid their eggs. The stench produced by the urine is strong enough to deter most egg predators. The thought of it is enough to keep me away too. 